what are some of the devices available for epilepsy treatment right now? There are presently four devices that could be used for epilepsy treatment, two of which are approved in the United States and two that are approved in other countries. The first device for epilepsy was vagus nerve stimulators. That's approved around the world and there are some new versions of that device that are hopefully coming out in the near future. Then there's uh, the device that was just approved recently in the United States, responsive neurostimulation, and there are two others, deep brain stimulation, approved in about 35 countries around the world, and also a very new device, trigeminal nerve stimulation, approved in Europe. Okay. And what are the potential side effects of these devices? So the devices have a very different side effect profile from drugs mm -hmm. and that's particularly useful for patients who are bothered by typical anti-seizure drug effects uh, such as tiredness, dizziness, stomach upset, uh, thinking problems, uh, weight gain, risk of birth defects, uh, tremor, so on. Mm -hmm. Those side effects do not happen with devices typically. The main device side effects happen uh, acutely after the device is implanted so that there will be the usual expected uh, post-surgical risks for inserting a device in the chest or a wire in the head or a wire in the neck depending upon your uh, devices. And then there may be some long-term side effects uh, such as paresthesias which are tingling feelings typically at the site of the device uh, implantation. There may be infections that can occur, and there can sometimes be consequences of the neurostimulation itself. And how do you see where these devices fit in uh, compared to the anti-seizure medications at this time? Well, uh, devices I think are complementary to seizure medications. The uh, medications are usually tried first because they're simpler, they're less expensive, they're easier to manipulate and alter if one medication is not going well. But only about two out of three people with epilepsy respond completely satisfactorily to medications. And that leaves one third of one percent of the world not responding properly to medications, a very large number of people who need something different. So devices are an opportunity to sometimes achieve some seizure control in that population uh, who, d who do not respond to medications. It's not necessarily that devices are better than drugs, it's just that one type of treatment may work in a particular case uh -huh. where the other does, does not. So usually, uh, to be specific about your question, drugs will be tried uh, first and then devices, although in the future that may shift a little bit uh, earlier in favor of devices as we get more experience with them. In terms of side effects, uh, the most experience has been obtained with side effects for the vagus nerve stimulator. Mm -hmm. And those are mostly voice and throat side effects. It's uh, a fortunate uh, anatomical fact that most of the fibers from the left vagus nerve are afferent to brain, whereas from the right vagus nerve they are mostly efferent to viscera. Mm -hmm. So if we stimulate the left vagus nerve, we usually avoid the bradycardia or GI or any respiratory problems that you might get with right vagus nerve stimulation. Those still sometimes do occur, but mostly hoarseness, uh, tickling in the throat, coughing are the main side effects. And if the stimulation current is turned up slowly for the patient, they usually uh, adjust to those without much of a problem. So none of these side effects are long-lasting or permanent in any way? Not, the side effects are not usually permanent, no. In fact, people usually become um, more used to the devices and the side effects become less as time goes on in the device. Um, on the other hand, the beneficial effects of many of these devices appears to increase, both with vagus nerve stimulation, responsive neurostimulation, and the deep brain stimulation, the initial efficacy may be in the range of a 20 to 40 percent reduction in seizures. Uh, but over time, after a year, two years, up to five years, there may be continued improvement and reduction can be as high as 
a 60 to 70 percent reduction in seizures with an occasional person becoming seizure free for a long stretch of time. So you explain how the, you compare the devices with the drugs, uh, but how do you compare the devices amongst themselves? How can a doctor decide which device is better compared, one device compared to the other? Yes. So the question is how to, how to choose the order of treatment, and that's a very good question. Right now, at least within the United States, we only have two choices, vagus nerve stimulation and responsive neurostimulation. But uh, I think in the future, we will have uh, all four choices for the devices that I mentioned. And my hope is that the decision uh, will not be formulaic, but will be mostly individualized mm -hmm. according to particular concerns or needs of of a patient, uh, coupled with what we know about the device. For example, the responsive neurostimulator can stimulate over one or two regions of brain. Mm -hmm. There's an option for one or the other, but in both cases it's helpful to know where the seizure focus is mm -hmm. in order to implant the device over the seizure focus to, to stimulate at that point. On the other hand, the deep brain stimulator, which currently goes into anterior regions of thalamus on both sides of the brain does not require that you know where the seizure focus is. So you might use one in one circumstance and the other in another circumstance. I will say that um, invasiveness is always a factor and the vagus nerve stimulator is implanted in the chest and the neck which is less invasive than implantation directly into brain tissue itself. So that might be used at an earlier stage for that reason. So can you make any comments about the cost effectiveness of these devices? Good question. These devices can be cost effective because they can reduce numbers and sometimes intensity and consequences of seizures, reduce hospitalizations, doctor visits, utilization. They can also allow sometimes reduction of medications, which is a cost a reduction in itself. The evidence in the studies are best for the vagus nerve stimulator because it's been around the longest, but the other newer devices are also, I think, showing good early evidence of cost efficacy as well as general efficacy and safety. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much.